All right, welcome back. We are now going into our second video here in Biosphere Rule number two, value cycling. And remember, we talked about the different product levels, so the hierarchy of product uh, uh, of levels of a product. We're now going to look at the highest level, uh, what we're going to be calling epicycling. And epicycling is epi means above, and so this is the cycling of entire products, uh, the the complete products. Uh, uh, cycling for maximizing the use, cycling use among either multiple uh, customers or consumers or multiple uses within an existing organization. So, uh, and there's lots of models for this and we are actually seeing really a boom and an innovative boom now around the possibilities and approaches, especially using information technology to expand where epicycling is actually pursued. So. What epicycling tries to do is it's optimizing asset productivity. Uh, you want to out, you, you have invested dramatic amounts of uh, time, energy, uh, materials, and information in creating products um, which become assets. You want to maximize those, that productivity over time. And you do that through collaborative reuse of entire or whole products. All right, so Again, this is not something that's unheard of in the biosphere. We have examples of how the biosphere actually engages in this type of epicycling. This is a hermit crab, and, what, and a hermit crab uh, actually reuses a shell. And in fact, as it goes through its life and grows, it uh, will jettison a shell that it's become too big for, find another one and occupy that shell, and the shell that it jettisoned will be picked up by another organism. And so this is the biosphere maximizing the productivity of the investment that was made uh, in producing that shell in the first place. A lot of information, energy, and materials were used to structure that cell, and here's the biosphere taking that opportunity to get multiple uses out of a single product being produced. And you know, there's thousands of uh, species of hermit crabs that do this. Uh, there is also birds that, and other types of uh, um, uh, uh, other, and insects that will reuse nests. Um, octopi will reuse uh, shells and other things. So this is a, a relatively common uh, phenomena in the biosphere. And it's logical because you're actually squeezing more value out of an asset, out of a physical material asset that you've created. Um, so we can see this opportunities uh, abound and how it plays out in our own economy. Uh, we've, you know, the typical, if you actually think about it, if you just went to your house and you looked at most of the items in your house, you would recognize that the vast majority of the time you are not using those products. And even something like an automobile that many people use every day, uh, research shows that the bulk of the time, the vast majority of, that, of, of, the, of a day, that car is just sitting in a parking lot somewhere. It's not being used by anyone. The average is, it's estimated that 90% of a car's lifetime is, is, and it's just sitting there parked, not being used. So there are opportunities. This, this is to access and uh, take advantage of that unused value, of that, you know, we've, we've invested heavily, you know, we've taken materials, we've used energy, and we've used design information and knowledge to create this valuable asset um, we can begin to ask ourselves, how can we begin to maximize the productivity of that? And again, this is nothing new for business. There's a number of entire industries that are built on understanding how to maximize this unused value, how to maximize the productivity of assets. So any industry where you have big investments in big assets, uh, you're going to discover that there are these, um, these epicycling strategies. So take, for example, an airline, right? An airline has to spend a lot of money to build an airplane. It's got, it's got systems. It's got information technology. It's got marketing approaches. It's got booking systems that allow it to maximize and cycle the productivity over the maximum number of uses. Same thing with a hotel. And, there's, and then, you know, there's even um, sort of accounting metrics or accounting uh, uh, tools. You know, if you, you invest in building a, um, a hotel, then you know, that's a big asset that you've, you know, a physical asset, and you want it to be used, put it, be, be in, in process most of the time. And so there are ways we can kind of begin to manage that. There are ratios, there's, there are accounting approaches. So if you have a 200 room hotel and you have 75 guests, you know you have a 75% occupancy. And so you can begin then thinking about, well, how am I gonna structure my business model to bump that up so that we are actually uh, generating the most value we can 
from this big asset that we happen to own. All right? And uh, it's not just big expensive assets. We're actually beginning to see now more examples of epicycling or, or this, this um, use cycling, even for you know, relatively um, inexpensive or what you might even consider mundane products. Uh, you, can, you can see um, Grief, this is a company that builds industrial containers. They also now have a strategy what, whereby they are cycling or reutilizing these industrial containers. They're not just a one use uh, opportunity, they can reutilize them, begin to maximize the productivity uh, and, and, and actually maximize the revenue they can get from the investment in the fabrication and the production of a single, single container. And oftentimes, the, these reuse cycles um, can become more profitable than the actual, you know, sort of linear value chain production of barrels as fast as you can and find people to buy them. So you you know, the sell it and forget it model. These other models can actually uh, generate substantial uh, uh, revenues and opportunities, business opportunities that the linear model uh, overlooks or is unable to access, right? And we're seeing now then a profusion of this largely because information technology, um, the internet and, and networks in general are, are lowering the transaction costs of making these products available to us. So, you know, Uber and Airbnb, these are, um, these are really sort of information technology platforms that lower the cost of connecting someone who might need to use, say, uh, an apartment in Manhattan or an automobile in San Antonio, Texas, um, or a zip car in, you know, in Berlin, Germany. The, we have a dramatic way to lower the transaction costs of connecting people with unused assets in a way that generates value for them and revenue for us. Right, so there's a, a we could spend an entire um, I could create a whole nother course just on the opportunities for for epicycling for this value cycling uh, of entire products. But you need to begin to think about um, what are the opportunities for your products? Um, are there opportunities? Can we begin to think about ways we can either maximize the, the asset productivity ourselves or assist our customers in maximizing the asset productivity from our products? And so the benefits of epicycling are value preservation, right? We, we invest a lot of time, energy, money, information to get materials into a form that is useful. And so if we can preserve that and, and, and then maximize the productivity of those assets, we are actually improving, obviously, the economics, but also the value retention, value recovery in society. And we are now be able to do this a lot better because we, we have existing networks that we can uh, util utilize as information technology um, platforms that allow us to facilitate and maximize um, the value, all right? So that's epicycling. Uh, again, you need to begin taking a look at this. Uh, if you begin to discover that the possibilities or potential in your products, then I would recommend, um, a, a, you should probably contact me and I can begin to uh, help you uh, provide guidance on ways you can begin discovering more and identifying models, strategies, tactics that might work for your products. Right? But that's uh, epicycling. That's the highest level. In the next video, we're going to start moving down the hierarchy, the prior part of hierarchy, and see more um, more traditional types of value cycling or recycling. All right. So see you in the next video.